month or two. So let me shift very briefly and talk about this uh, new volume that my colleagues and I at the NISM framework have been involved in. It's called NISM Global Briefs, Educating for the Social, the Emotional, and the Sustainable. The main thing for you to take out is this uh, www.nissim.org. If you uh, go to this uh, website, you can download this 900-page peer-reviewed volume free of charge. It has 60 contributors, contributors that speak about some of the challenges of integrating uh, themes around Target 4.7 and social emotional learning in textbooks and in other educational materials and in terms of teacher training and teacher preparation. There's obviously no way that I can summarize the incredible diversity and rich array of contributions that you will find in this volume. Uh, my two colleagues from the UK, Margaret Sinclair and Andy Smart, were the key editors. Uh, I was one of the other co-editors. We worked on this for about a year to put it together. This is an open resource, open access volume, but it is peer review and is, I think, very high quality. Um, partly the argument that we have in this book is the argument that Nissen puts forward, which is the following. And it says, in many low-income and conflict-affected countries, there's already been a lot of investment in issues of access. And what we've seen in the last couple of years, primarily because of the increase in the number of, set, of learning assessments, is that there's a concern that children are getting to school, but they're not learning the basics. So a lot of the investment from the World Bank and many of the other donors has been how to improve foundational skill learning in low and middle income countries and ensure it also in conflict affecting setting. But the point that we make is that if that's the only thing that donors and countries are investing in, which is ensuring foundational skills, then we're lost. It's clear that this is important if you take a certain comprehensive view about ESD. But if, all, if we think of ESD as involving issues around sustainability, around values, around uh, how uh, children are connected to their communities, about understanding of the environment, then only focusing on, on foundational skills, literacy, and numeracy is not going to get us far enough. And so we think, we also argue that it would be enormously expensive to train sufficient number of teachers who specialize in these areas. Not that it's impossible, but it's very expensive. But a low cost, relatively <coughs> more effective intervention is to train the people who write the textbooks and the educational materials that teachers use in the classrooms. And the kind of pedagogical recommendations that are embedded in textbooks or should be embedded in textbooks. We think that this is something that uh, is e more easily accomplished. And it's so partly we are promoting how to assist countries, uh, especially low and middle income countries, in the embedding of 4.7 theme, 4.7, uh, target 4.7 themes around ESD and BCD, but also gender equality, cultural diversity, and so forth, human rights education, and also social emotional learning, which we consider to be key to effective construction in this area, and how to improve the way they are captured in the textbooks. And one of the things to keep in mind, which I'm sure many of the colleagues can testify to, is that even in low and middle income countries, when children don't have textbooks, the teacher has a textbook and often structures instruction according to the textbook. So it is not the prevalence or, ab or the absence of textbooks which is critical here. If the textbook is well done and teachers are using it in their lesson plans and the way in which they convey these areas, it will pass on to the, to the students. So it's important, even in places where textbooks may not be available, to have high quality, well written, uh, cognitively, social, emotionally, and behaviorally balanced textbooks uh, in which we can ensure good pedagogical practice and a more effective uh, kind of GCD and ESD uh, 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 integration. So take a look at it. Um, I think that you will find it of some value. And with one last minute, let me just make a recommendation to those who are drafting the final statement from this con uh, conference, because I will not be here, unfortunately, uh, through uh, Monday. 
One of the things that you should keep in mind is that the global indicator for target 4.7 says the extent to which countries are mainstreaming ESD and GCD in policies, in curricula, in teacher training, and in student assessment. And I think that part of the, and as somebody who was the director of the Global Education Monitoring Board and was tasked with trying to monitor progress of uh, target 4.7, and I, I, I still believe how important that is, despite all the challenges of monitoring, <coughs> that the statement should include that there be a collection, a compilation, and maybe an analysis of the kind of teacher preparation, the kind of teacher training that goes on in this area, because these kinds of docu documents are not readily available. And so bringing them together, this would be establishing clear monitoring and evaluation systems, not only to motivate and support implementation, but also to uh, uh, foster the, co the collection and compilation of the ways in which countries, or even institutions, are preparing teachers uh, for the next generation. So thank you very much for your attention. We'd like to take a short uh, time for question and answer. And any questions from the floor? Uh, thank you very much, Professor Benavot, for your report on this very comprehensive and constructive uh, study. Uh, my name is Tomayashi of University. Uh, I have one question about one aspect of the findings that you uh, found out in this uh, research. Namely, uh, in the findings there, uh, you pointed out that uh, there was uh, some greater focus on the so so social and uh, emotional dimensions in global citizenship education in comparison to uh, ESD, where more emphasis was put on cognitive. Uh, and uh, what, what is your interpretation about this difference of focusing between the uh, GCD and the SDD? I think it might be interesting. Maybe if there's another question, I'd like to take another question or two and then answer them all here. voice. <laughs> I'm from Malaysia, a social enterprise called LeapNet. We specialize in school transformation uh, and our flagship pro uh, program is the Trust School program. So the question is, thank you very much for sharing your findings. And, and you did say that the focus, uh, you know, the focus was looking at the content and not really looking at the, you know, the practice. So the question is, are there, are there any plans to kind of observe, you know, to, to do a follow-up study to observe whether the rhetoric is actually being translated to reality. Because I think, you know, in common with many other countries in Malaysia, we have fantastic statements which get lost in the delivery. Um, so, yeah, that's the key question. And similarly with your Nissan uh, point, yeah, it's great to train the uh, textbook writers, but once again, it really comes down to teacher belief and teacher worldviews in terms of whether they are actually delivered effectively. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, maybe one last question. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. And your, one of your recommendations, you said that uh, the uh, writer of textbook is uh, play a very important role in uh, in terms of educating ESD. Uh, we have a, uh, uh, sorry, my name is Ari from Indonesia. Uh, so we have a national textbook used by all students at all school levels, uh, but it's already there in the, the textbook. Do you think it's sufficient to write a kind of uh, supplementary books or information uh, to accompany uh, the, the existing textbook? Thank you. So thank you very much for your questions. Um, 
Uh, let me uh, first of all say that my explanation for this difference here is that issues around uh, cultural diversity, the themes that are typically associated with global citizenship education are also found either in specialized documents or sometimes in language and not only in the social sciences, and there seems to be a great